why you're using your measuring tool as a scribe. Let's say you want to drill a bunch of holes one inch in from the edge. The quickest way I can think of to do it is get your calipers, set them at an inch, lock them, and just drag a line like that. And then you can measure out your spacing. So the other way you would have to do it is you would come in like this, mark one inch with a sharpie on this end, mark it an inch on this end, oh. try to get it as close as you can, and then draw a line. See how much slower that was? But if you're not wanting to scratch your parts, you'd obviously want to use a Sharpie instead of the calipers. And then the calipers, I wouldn't use them on steel, just aluminum, because aluminum's soft. You'll end up wearing off your edges and then they won't be as accurate if you do it a lot. And what you don't want to do with calipers, these were $225 ones, I think, and I ruined them. I had them open like this. You can see how those ends are cooked. I had a weigh-in off my my welding plate, like that. And electricity moves in pretty strange ways sometimes. It went through here and arced, and it, it heated this up so that it warped and I had to cut it off. And then it, it smoked that tip and then it smoked this tip down here too, so these are junk now. So I'd recommend you get a cheaper pair, like these Husky ones from Home Depot, I think, or something on Amazon, if you're using them for marking out parts. And then keep these nicer minted choils for actual machinist work. Another incredible video. Are you sure a surgeon isn't your day job? Clever with the positioner setup. Did you use annealed aluminum for this? I've never had much luck bending any of the T6 grade material. For this project, I used 6061 flanges that are 3 8 thick, and then the sheet that I formed was 3003 aluminum, eighth inch thick. And I used 3003 because it's really soft compared to 6061 or even 5052. And the problem with it can be if you if you use 3003 on bigger parts, it's soft and it can flex and fatigue. But as little surface area as there is around this whole thing, I thought 3003 was the best choice because it's easiest to hammer form. What setting of the TIG machine you use? Okay, here's a quick ad for my website, 6061.com. All of this stuff is explained. The website is a one-time $95 payment, lifetime subscription, and you can use PayPal or a credit card. And it explains everything in detail. I show you my shop setup with part numbers for all my machinery, bandsaw blade types, tooth spacing, speeds, tungsten, torch setup, how to ball it properly for what you're doing, advanced welder setup, basic welder setup, what frequency changes and what I prefer, and then what kind of welder you should consider buying depending on what you're doing, where to buy aluminum welding material online or at big stores, how to cut it, 10 different tools, how to properly clean aluminum, that's really important if you want it to look nice, and then just weld exercises with really high quality arc shots showing exactly how I do it. Bees with no fill rod, fill rod T-welds, inside outside corners, what fill rod I choose to use, and then exercises to really dial in your bead consistency. 
and then how to master restarts. Every single one of these is a weld restart, out of position welding, and then a lot of build videos. Some of these are for free on YouTube for you guys to watch, but a lot of them are not listed on YouTube. Makes my teeth itch. Sounds like I'm at the dentist. Open. This guy has so much talent. Just wow. Skills, yes. Talent, definitely not. I had to put the hours in. You only get one go of that, and it's perfect. I've learned more TIG welding from your YouTube videos, 6061, than I learned in three years at school. Glad I could help. If you got any questions that aren't answered on the website, feel free to email me.